All right, Tom Trento, director of the United West, with another a fascinating episode, ladies and gentlemen, of our investigative work. And with us today is a, an individual that uh, we had the privilege of being in Israel this past June for two weeks with he and his team, Immigration Reform and Law Institute early. Phenomenal lawyers, watchdogs, watching illegal immigration in the United States. Please welcome the Director of Investigations, Matt O'Brien. Matt, how you doing today? Pretty good. Thanks for having me on, Tom. You know, I, I'm torn whenever I say we had a wonderful time in Israel. We did those five weeks in June. I was there for five weeks. Uh, we had Tom Holman and, and Sarah Carter on our trip, your boss, Dale, a few others from your contingent. Um, did you could you ever have imagined right in the footsteps we were up north, the Hezbollah tunnel all over Gaza, that just a few months later, the Middle East would be on fire? No, it, it was shocking uh, when I saw it happen. But I think everything that we learned on the trip was proven by the circumstances. There's a reason why Israel has these barriers. Uh, they work. They were built to cut down on the number of terrorists who could be in Israel preparing for something like this. So it, it's been very popular for people to say the walls didn't work, but I, I think they did. It took an all-out assault to overcome them rather than the death by a thousand cuts that Israel was subjected to before they built all of these barriers. That's a very, very important point. And uh, we have done extensive presentations on how the heck did this thing happen? Those walls, those fences, those security systems, particularly in Gaza, where we walked and, and drove, they were designed for uh, handfuls of intruders, 10, 20 people coming, 30, which had been the modus for 20 years. They weren't, particularly on the high holy days, for an invasion of 3,000 armed warriors, which uh, they had a, a perfect plan of... Uh, of speed, of uh, subterfuge, of excellence, and they caught Israel off guard. That's for another day, but for today, uh, the United West, on October 7th, we convened our team, and we said, okay, this is the big one, and the, the war is going to spill into the U.S. The Hamas collaborators, CARE, and all these Muslim Brotherhood organizations are going to be active, and we're seeing that all over the street. But also, this is the time now where every evil country is going to send their terrorists through our southern border. Matt, what the heck is going on on the southern border, and what are you guys doing about it? Well, the, the war is already on its way here. Uh, the Biden administration has basically kicked the door open, and uh, this is demographic warfare, what they are trying to do is bring people here that they're going to try and turn into Democrat voters. A voter registration drive. Now, you as uh, as the chief investigator leading your team uh, at Early, uh, you guys have filed a lawsuit against ICE. Now, you had the director of ICE having dinner with you in Israel, but that's the old ICE under President Trump. Why have you filed a lawsuit against ICE? Well, the Biden administration has completely abdicated its responsibility to enforce the borders of the United States. And there are some interesting programs that are in the laws that govern how we are supposed to control our borders. One of those is a program called 287G, which allows ICE to deputize state and local law enforcement officials on the theory that they are the people who are most likely to meet illegal aliens who are criminals. They're going to be the first ones to encounter them. And the program has been highly successful. What it does is it has state and local law enforcement officers identifying illegal aliens, pointing them out to ICE, and then ICE pursues removal charges against them. Well, without any authorization whatsoever, the Biden administration put a hold on this program and didn't tell anyone about it. It came out in a news report. What we wanted to do was find out who decided this and why. And of course, they've been stonewalling us. So we had to sue them to get the information. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I, I want you to get 
what Matt just said. There's an existing program when President Trump and 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 Obama before him. This is an existing program which simply makes all the sense in the world. You 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 include and train local law enforcement. They're the guys that stop somebody who uh, crashed into a car. They find out he's illegal. They run a background on him. They find out he's wanted. And now, once a, a local sheriff would find a guy who um, is clearly illegal, has warrants, how does that guy under Trump and Obama, how did that guy get deported? There are a number of different things that could happen. Uh, if the department was on its toes, then it would have had an existing relationship with ICE and it could have reported them. Uh, but if it was a department that actually had a 287G agreement under this section, then certain officers from that department would actually be deputized to act as federal immigration law enforcement officials. And so what they would be doing is Anytime someone who is arrested who appeared to be somebody who was unlawfully present in the country, they would be actually running background checks on these people in ICE systems. And so what it did was it, it cut out the middleman and it made the whole thing extremely efficient. It made state and local law enforcement a force multiplier for ICE which even though it has big responsibilities is relatively small. And of course, if you're the Biden administration and you want to kick the door open and prepare for an amnesty, you don't want this program in place because it's very effective at removing illegal aliens and other immigration violators, but particularly those ones who have a tendency toward criminal behavior. Now, um, I, I read your uh, the plaintiff's lawsuit. You guys are the plaintiffs. The defendant is Immigration Customs Enforcement. And apparently uh, a hold, a Biden hold, was uh, initiated in January 2021. Nobody knew about it. Um, somebody discovered it. You guys found out about it. And uh, this whole streamlining system of getting bad guys out of the country uh, is on hold right now. If if a member who has been deputized um, finds that person, can they still proceed to have him deported? Well, here's the thing: the agreements that are in force are supposed to be honored. We're not sure what extent that is is still happening because the the Biden administration has clearly sent a message that they want to turn ICE and Customs and Border Protection into a shuttle service to bring people who are here unlawfully into the interior of the country. But theoretically, if the police department or sheriff's department already has a 287G agreement in place, they're supposed to be acting in accordance with that. But what happened that was particularly bad with this situation is there were upwards of 20 to 30 agreements that were just signed and that we're in the process of being implemented that the federal government backed off of and put on hold and then they're putting on hold new agreements so as we're hitting you know i think the highest uh, number of illegals we've had pass over the border so far to date has been 22,000 which took place somewhere in december i think in eagle pass texas as these people are coming over in massive numbers the federal government is backing away from the assistance of the state and local police departments. And so the only conclusion that we can reach is that this is has been done on purpose so that the Biden administration does not have to continue to enforce the immigration laws. And they don't want to enforce them simply because they don't like them. They don't see it as being in their political interests to enforce them. I know what, what Matt just said, in their political interests. This, folks, is what is uh, not only dividing this country, the political interests of this particular administration in terms of a voter registration drive. Get all these people in, throw them against a wall. If if a 30 percent of them turn out to be uh, voters, um, that'll switch the demographic in this country. But clearly, the national security implications are so profound. What happens, Matt? I live in a little tiny town in, in Florida, a little police department. If we don't have any agreements, typically the agreements between law enforcement and ICE are in the 
the hotbed uh, illegal immigration um, areas. Um, if if one of our policemen finds somebody totally illegal, warrants the whole thing, what is our local cops supposed to do? Theoretically, what they're supposed to do is get in contact with ICE. But I, I grew up in a family full of Irish cops in Boston, and this has been a problem going back to like the 80s. I can remember my father and, and other people in my family who were in law enforcement saying, we call the INS, back when it was still the INS, Tom, and, and say, hey, we got somebody, we're 99% sure that this person is an illegal alien, they're also a criminal, and INS would go, yeah, we'll take down their information and we'll get around to it. And, you know, in a post-September 11th world, in a world where we know that the Iranians, the Chinese, the Russians are trying to penetrate the United States, we have people from transnational criminal organizations ranging from the cartel to the mafia and the Andrangheta trying to come here and get into the United States. We don't want to be backing away from this. What we want to be doing is we want to be ensuring that we don't have the type of problems that Israel had before it put up its barriers, where you have a fifth column from everyone that dislikes you already resident in your country and waiting for something to happen so that they can exploit it to their benefit. And that's that's essentially what happened with the September 11th attacks. Every single one of the people who was involved in that was somebody who had been admitted to the country lawfully. A few of them were overstays, a bunch of them were still in lawful status, and they exploited our immigration generosity and our open borders in order to do harm to Americans. Hey, Matt, I got a question for you. We got a battle going on in Texas. They are trying to follow their constitution and secure the border. But we got that federal constitution that the administration is not following. What happens with that? Now, this is interesting because immigration is one of those preempted federal fields where the states aren't supposed to be able to legislate. However, Constitution has another clause that imposes a responsibility on the federal government to, as a union, defend all of the states from foreign enemies and ensure their integrity and protect them from invasion. And what's going on in Texas is an invasion. So there's a question here as to whether Texas is entitled when the federal government fails to meet its obligation to do what the federal government should be doing. And I think there's a strong argument that Texas is 100% legitimate in doing this because there's a complete dereliction of duty by the Biden administration. It's just ignoring the immigration laws as it sees fit. Keep your eyes on Texas, ladies and gentlemen. But I want to bring the cookies down to the lower shelf, Matt. Let's say the United States is a big ship and um, and and illegal immigration is uh, is a hole in the side of the ship. Um, how soon before that ship gets filled with water and we sink? You know, I think if you want to compare the U.S. to the, the Titanic, uh, <laughs> we're probably a lot more unsinkable than the Titanic claimed to be. I, I think we're at the position where we've seen the iceberg. We're on a collision course uh, with the iceberg but it hasn't punctured the hull yet. Iceberg, run ahead! Why are they turning? And if it has punctured the hull and we close the compartment off quickly enough, then we can right the ship and bring it to safety. Um, but if this continues the way that it's going, then we're going to look a lot more like the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, where the giant wave comes right over the bow and swamps the ship before anybody can figure out a way to, to write it and to deal with the problem. Does anyone know where the love of God goes when the waves turn the minutes to hours? The searchers all say they'd have made Whitefish Bay if they put 15 more miles behind her. They might have split up or they might have capsized They may have broke deep and took water And all that remains is the faces and the names Of the wives and the sons and the daughters 